John's on the line from Los Alamitos, California. Hi, John. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? All right. I, I wanted to get um, some information on a hands-free mouse, and my research has taken me as far as uh, the light pointer uh, that you attach well, it, from a, a strap on the head. Right. And you hit the, you direct the uh, light to to a whatever you want to open up on the. Yeah, so, and, then the, and then there's a pedal. And then yeah. That's, like, yeah. There are a variety of choices. This is a, a designed for uh, people who have various disabilities. So mm -hmm. it depends on what you can do. There's puffers. There's there's uh, head-mounted pointers. There's foot pointers. It really depends on what your capabilities are. Is this, is it, do you, are you disabled or is this uh, just something you don't want to use your hands anymore? I don't because I'm, I'm a classical pianist ah. and also jazz, and I noticed that uh, I was trying to save my right hand to go to my left, and I was using the mouse uh, with my left, yeah. and now I'm getting that pain in my thumb. No, that's not her. Oh, my gosh. Let's protect your hands at all costs. Wow. Are you professional? Do you do, you do this for a living? Uh, no, I'm a teacher. Oh, but wonderful. I play things, you know, list Rachmaninoff, the oh. very complex things. That list and, stuff, man. Wow. It, it, yeah, uh, I was playing the other day, and then and then my thumb snapped, and I just like in the middle of something I was playing. So <clears throat> I want I want to make sure that I can you know play this stuff without sacrificing my hands because I'm using a mouse. So <sighs> okay, so the first thing I tell people to try is a trackball. Um, reason being, it's a different kind of movement. It's still mouse like. Really, if you think of a mouse as uh, as a device with a ball on the bottom, the ball detects the movement of the of the mouse on top of it and moves a pointer on the screen. A trackball is just an inverted mouse. Instead of moving the mouse, you move the ball, which means you can do small movements. You won't use your thumb at all, probably. You do small movements with your forefinger. Uh, your thumb you would use maybe for clicking. You should try that as an alternative. They're inexpensive. They're they're completely work the same way as a mouse, so you don't have to change your computer setup or anything like that. Um, and I, I, for a lot of people with carpal tunnel from mousing, uh, this is a good solution. Most of the time people get carpal tunnel, by the way, not so much from mousing, but from keying. Um, so you also you know, may want to reduce the amount of keyboard you use. Some kind of voice-activated uh, typing system. Yes, there are some great solutions for that, and some of them you don't need to use a mouse at all. You can uh, you can do it all via voice. They do make ergonomic keyboards as well. There's sometimes they're split. Microsoft makes a, a good one. They have they they have they keep your wrists and arms in a more natural position. I would research if I were you ergonomics in general because this is not just the mouse. This is how your arms are placed, how you're sitting how your hands are, the angle of your wrists. You want to have it be a natural angle. If your wrists are tilted up as you're doing all this stuff, that can cause issues, including carpal tunnel. The last thing you'd want is a professional pianist. Um, I don't, I'm not really familiar with the pedal mouses. I've seen them used in the head-mounted mouses. There's the Tracker, tra or Track IR, which has been around for a long time. A lot of people um, <laughs> are familiar with this uh, that watches your head movements. There are mouse mice that you hold in the air. They're kind of like the Nintendo uh, Wii's controller where it's sensing movement not on the ground but in the air. But there's so many of these that it's hard for me to say which one would be the best uh, for so it, you. It would seem, yeah, because it, it, for the, the, the light pointer, from the, uh, directing it from your... your uh forehead it seemed like it would be hard to aim it right yeah and it's going to be hard on your right. neck people only i'll be honest people do that only because they can't use a mouse for for a variety of reasons right it's not this it's i think you'd find it more frustrating so my suggestion and this is frustrating enough is to start with the trackball and see if that helps okay kensington uh logitech a number of companies make them uh i have i use a logitech trackball uh, they're great, and they give you all of the functionality of a mouse in a, in a fashion that's analogous, but completely different movements for your hand. And even moving, you know, from your left hand to your right hand into the trackball and kind of mixing it up might be sufficient, because, of course, it's overuse that's the problem. Right. right? Okay. At I least give it. those a try before you go to the foot pedals which are or the head-mounted devices, which have a steep learning curve. Um, your neck muscles, for instance, 
have never done this before. So you're going to be in pain for a while. Uh, people generally choose these alternatives because they have no choice. They have severe carpal tunnel. They can't use their wrists. Uh, or they have a disability that prevents them from using your hands. Um, and so all of these uh, alternatives are great because they make the technology accessible, but they do have a steep learning curve. The, the beauty of the mouse is that it doesn't require that much to get used to it. Uh, actually, touch is probably superior to a mouse, isn't it? And that's another thing you might want to look at is a touchscreen laptop. Um, there are a great variety of these right now. My favorite, current favorite is the Dell XPS 13 and 15. These, if you pay a little extra, come with very nice touch screens. And you may not use the mouse at all because you, you, you tap to tap the screen. And uh, that is a really nice way to do it. If you're using a Mac, there are no touch screens. But, of course, an iPad is, uh, is Apple's touch operating system is the iOS operating system and an iPad Pro either the the giant 12 inch or the new 10 inch might be a good alternative as well you never use a mouse on a uh, on an iPad do you in fact there's so many great music programs on the iPad I would say that'd be a, that'd be another thing to look at and uh, touch is probably the most natural right that's something uh, even two-year-old children you'll you'll give them an iPad or an iPhone and they grok it immediately they can sit down I've seen two-year-olds launch Netflix go to Phineas and Ferb and start the show so they can watch it. They can't even read yet. They don't need to. It's such a natural interface. The next most natural probably is the mouse. And I don't, I don't know if you remember the first time you used a mouse. In the early days of Windows, they had training. You had to, you had to they, before you could use the operating system, I think the Apple, uh, Apples did this too. Before you could use the operating system, they said, okay, now, here's how you use a mouse. Um... And so I think there is a little bit of a learning curve. At the same time, I see people sit down and use a mouse for the first time and pretty quickly, within an hour, become proficient. So that's the next best. Trackballs will take a little bit more to learn. Um, and then a really steep learning curve for things like pedals and head-mounted pointing devices. I think that, I think that uh, start with touch, actually. Touch is the future. It's so natural. It's just... It, it's it's how we interact with the world, isn't it? We reach out and touch something. And when you see little, little babies using touch interfaces, I, I worry for these kids. <laughs> Frankly, you see a lot of kids now using a laptop, a Mac laptop. They can't use it. It's, I can't. It's not. <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> scroll and nothing happens.